Surgeons in the U.S. successfully performed a groundbreaking double lung transplant last month. It was the first time that a COVID patient received organs from a donor who had previously recovered from the virus. The procedure took place at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago. The recipient is a male patient in his 60s who was first diagnosed with the virus last May. Doctors say the donor had recovered and the lungs didn't suffer any permanent damage. The donor's death was unrelated to the virus. For more on this groundbreaking procedure and its implication for other procedures, I want to bring in Dr. Samuel Kim. He's a thoracic surgeon at Northwestern Medicine and one of the doctors that was involved in that double lung transplant. Dr. Kim, thanks for being here. So explain to our viewers the complexities added by COVID-19 to the transplant procedure. Well, so in COVID-related lung transplantation, it's a very difficult, more so than our usual lung transplantation, because the recipient's lungs are quite damaged, and there's quite a bit of a fibrosis related to that. On top of that, the complexity of whether to transplant the previously uh, uh, infected uh, lung uh, that had been a COVID-related uh, infection, that adds a complexity whether to go ahead with the lung transplantation or not. So we have to do a lot of uh, investigation before actually undergoing a transplantation. And to make sure that the lung uh, in itself is uh, viable and healthy so that the recipient uh, gets a good result. And was there an advantage to using these lungs from a, a previous COVID-19 patient instead of waiting for a donor who had never had the virus? That's a great question. Uh, the, unfortunately, you know, there is a significant shortage of a lung in the United States. There's a uh, given year, hundreds of patients uh, die on the lung transplantation list. And so given the fact that there's over uh, 30 million uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the United States, which approximates 10% of the U.S. population, we're going to have a, a much more problem down the road of a, a, a supply of a lung that we're going to be able to uh, transfer in, into the patient. And so for this, in, in this circumstances, uh, this patient had been on a uh, lung transplant list for quite a bit. And the fact that the patient was on a ventilator support for a month, we thought that it was a uh, right time for us to accept this lung that otherwise had been uh, very, uh, looking very good on all the tests we've done so that we could uh, successfully uh, perform the lung transplantation so that the patient could be uh, uh, off the uh, ventilator support and get back to uh, being a, a, a who he himself. You know, it, it's so interesting because with all of the reporting and all the thinking that, that everybody has been doing on COVID-19, I have to confess that the problem of transplants and COVID donors uh, who have previously had the virus and, and COVID or and recipients who, who in this case currently had it was not one of the considerations. So once you finally identified a donor, how difficult was this procedure and how is the patient right now? Yes, so the, uh, you know, we've done a lot of, uh, of, you know, work beforehand, as I mentioned before. So we, you know, uh, did a uh, COVID test on not only the nasal pharyngeal swab, but also the bronchial lavage to make sure that the, the donor uh, doesn't have a current virus. On top of that, uh, we did a lung biopsy before the transplantation to make sure that the lung uh, has no permanent damage at all. We also did a, a fairly a thorough, uh, extensive uh, contact tracing and history beforehand to make sure that the, the donor uh, uh, was uh, clear from any exposure for COVID-19. And so, you know, that all that having said that, you know, when we brought the lung and, and, and was about to transplant and actually uh, after transplantation, the lung in itself looked like a regular lung that we uh, do a transplantation for, which was very healthy and viable and compliant. In terms of the technical difficulty with the operation, as I mentioned, was fairly you know, complex given the fact that the, the recipient's lungs were uh, quite damaged and there's a significant amount of a fibrosis and infection associated with it. At the same time, and we already done a 14 previous uh, lung transplantation related to COVID-19. So uh, it was you know, fairly for us a routine uh, double lung transplantation. Uh, currently, the patient is doing extremely well. Uh, I saw him this morning you know, participating in physical therapy off the ventilator. 
uh, and, and able to walk around the unit uh, gingerly. So it's still, there's a, still quite a bit of a recovery left for this patient, but uh, thus far, patients have made a significant recovery. It's wonderful to hear the, about the significant recovery. Um, what does the success then of this particular surgery mean for similar procedures in the future? Right. Um, so I do think that moving forward, we are going to have to deal with uh, the donors who were previously uh, exposed or infected uh, with COVID-19. Majority of the people uh, would have had either mild symptoms or are moderate symptoms. Where, you know, in these kind of uh, circumstances, those patients would have had a complete recovery and not, not, uh, they would not have had any uh, permanent damage to the lung. There is going to be certain population where the COVID-19 had caused a significant damage to a point where those, the injury to the lung would not be recoverable and would have had a permanent damage, such as a fibrosis. It would be imperative for us to then decipher moving forward in these kind of circumstances who are the right donors and have a some sort of guideline as to what is safe uh, and not safe in performing this double lung transplantation. I do think that at Northwestern, we do have a capacity uh, and the procedure set to perform these procedures fairly safely. Well, at Northwestern, of course, you are um, you're a leader in the country for double lung transplants. In fact, since the start of the pandemic, uh, there at Northwestern, your team has completed 14 double lung transplants on COVID-19 survivors. That's the most performed at any hospital in the world. I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about some of the lung complications you've seen in patients that have been suffering from the virus. Right. So... You know, majority of our patients uh, were quite sick coming into the lung transplantation. Majority of these patients were on ECMO, and uh, this per uh, particular current patient was on a chronic ventilator support since November. And so coming into the operation, these patients are fairly deconditioned uh, and, and had, had a previous lung infection and quite debilitated. Now, having said that, you know, after the surgery, and after significant recovery, we were able to get, get this patient back to uh, you know, a normal situation uh, after a significant amount of rehabilitation. Now, the most common uh, complication we do see are uh, short temporary uh, 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 kidney dysfunction. That's due to significant amount of uh, hemodynamic instability that happens uh, during the first uh, couple of days after surgery or during the uh, surgery. Uh, and the majority of these patients would recover their kidney function uh, eventually. However, you could have a uh, lung uh, kidney failure that requires uh, dialysis for the first few weeks of the uh, uh, um, recovery. And then other big challenges, obviously, is to getting these patients to regain their muscle uh, function so, uh, to a point where we're you know, able to get these people up out of bed and then participate in the uh, uh, recovery and and, uh, and so forth. So those are the two major things that we're really focusing on trying to uh, prevent them from having a, any other uh, uh, injuries such as kidney injury. And they're really participating on the uh, physical therapy right after surgery to uh, have them gain a, a, a normal physiological function. Dr. Samuel Kim, thank you for joining us. Congratulations to your team and best wishes of recovery for your patients. Thank you very much.